Hi, I'm Ren, and welcome to the final part of my Bellerophon Alice cosplay tutorial. You've made it this far, and there's only a little more to go. But be warned, this last stretch is the most time-consuming and difficult part. <laughs> At least it was for me. We'll be making the horse head that rests on his back and deploys his wings, as well as the wings themselves. So if you're ready, let's begin. To start my horse, I needed to be able to translate something two-dimensional into 3D. That meant I needed to look at it from all available angles and kind of sketch a top-down view and a profile view. I'm not great at sculpting, but this would at least give me something similar to the drawing. After I figured out the sketches, I measured an approximation of how big I wanted the finished piece to be and got to work making them full size. As with all things in this project so far, the next step was to transfer it to foam. But where was I going to find a block of foam the right dimensions that was sturdy and firm? I could use insulation foam, but it can crack. Or I could use upholstery foam, but it's so squishy it can warp when I make the fabric covering. I decided it would be ideal to use EVA foam, but they don't really sell it in blocks, at least not that I've found, so I had to make one. I cut a crap ton of rectangles to the size I needed and contact cemented them together, held them in place with the clamp, and waited 24 hours for my brick to set. The next day, I came in and traced my two patterns onto the block. I didn't trace my ears because I figured they'd be easy enough to add on later instead of carving them out. With my guidelines in place, I started cutting away at my foam like it was a weird cake. I took it slow and kept checking the contours against my references and my sketches, until I finally had a shape I was happy with. Once the head was carved, I built up the ears and hot glued them in place. I normally wouldn't use hot glue because it could fall apart if the piece gets hot, but I was going to completely cover this piece so there would be little chance of the ears moving, even if the glue gave way. Then, like adding crumb coat before fondant, I covered my shape in duct tape. This smoothed out any rough patches and eliminated the need for sanding. It's going to get covered in fabric, so it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth, but I still want it to look nice. After checking how it was looking so far against my chest plate, it was time for fabric. I cut a large piece of my silver fabric out and added some slits where the ears of the horse would be. It's easier to cover the piece if I don't have to worry about super awkward shapes. Then, I laid out some newspaper and carefully covered section by section with spray adhesive and the silver fabric. I would spray a little bit, lay my fabric over it loosely, and then slowly stretch it into place, smoothing out any wrinkles I could, then spray the next part, and so on. Once the main body was covered as best I could, I stitched any loose fabric on the back closed. This part will always be against my body, so it doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to keep things from peeling back apart. After that, I cut a couple large triangles in my fabric and sewed them into cone shapes for the ears. I slid them in place, trimmed any excess, and hid and stitched them where the slits in the original fabric were. The final part before attachments is the eyes. These are another piece we don't have any color reference for, but the majority of the fan community agrees. They should be blue, the way Seiya's are his red accent color on his original helmet. So, I cut some blue fabric close to the same size and shape as my eye holes, and then carefully hid and stitched them in place, filling them with some stuffing before closing them completely to give them a little more life. Finally, to attach the head, I just used some large hook and bar closures. I sewed the bars to the chest plate and the hooks to the back of the horse's head. That way, it just slides into place and hangs there. It works really well, but sadly, I can't do this myself when I'm wearing the outfit, so you'll need help getting dressed. For the wings, I started the way I would any other pair of wings. I took a spool of wire and cut a piece that was a little over twice the size of one wing. 
I then bent it completely in half so I would have two even wings. With the wire still folded, I bent both halves simultaneously into rough wing shapes so they would match. Then slightly unfolded them from the middle so they looked like a pair of wings. After that, I duct taped the middle bend together to create a stick I could put into a future harness pocket for attachments. This also keeps the weight of the wings from pulling them away from each other over time. The next step is to make fabric covers for the wings that we can later glue all the feathers to. I loosely traced the shape of a single wing onto paper and cut out a triangle shape pattern. Then I cut out four of those triangle pieces and sewed them in pairs to create covers, leaving a corner open to slide the wire in from. After sliding them in, I pinned a channel for the wire to go through and sewed that down. It helps keep the frame from traveling around inside our wing and maintains the shape better. Once the channels were sewn in, I slid the fabric back in place and stitched the two covers together, permanently sealing my frame inside. After that, I checked the length of the wire and bent it tightly to the right length for where I wanted the wings to poke out from my back, like so. Then it was time to attach them. To make the wings freestanding, I decided to use sturdy interfacing to make a pocket the center wire could slide into that wouldn't get in the way of the horse head. I simply took a piece of interfacing a little larger than the center wire and securely sewed it to another piece of interfacing. Then, making sure to check the placement of the wings on my mannequin, I sewed that interfacing pocket onto the chest plate under the zipper. With that out of the way, it was time to start decorating these wings. On a piece of paper, I patterned out four different sizes of feathers. And then, measuring my patterns, I estimated how many of each type I would need to cover each wing. I don't exactly remember how many I needed of each, but in the end, I wound up cutting out around 170 total feathers. For the feathers themselves, I used a metallic silver organza because it's light and flowy, just like real feathers. I cut out just a little more than two extra of each type of feather, and then it was time to seal and detail them all. While I could probably get away with just using these plain shapes, I wanted some more realism in my wings. So I drew a center line down each side of each individual feather with a fine point Sharpie and added little lines coming off them to show the veins of the feathers. Then I drew similar lines along the edges on both sides and cut notches out as well to really give it some oomph. As I detailed the feathers, I used fray check to seal the edges one by one and set them off to the side to dry as I went along. This was a very long process and wound up using three whole bottles of fray check. So be prepared. After an agonizingly long time, I could finally attach them to the wings. I laid out a line of fabric glue, placing down my feathers in staggered rows from bottom to top, one wing at a time. Once the glue had dried and all the feathers were laid out, I trimmed up any feather edges that hung over my fabric frame and resealed the raw edges. Then it was time to build the weird cover piece that hangs over the top of the wings. I just taped some foam strips together and covered the outside with my silver before hand sewing them to the wings on both sides. The entire wing process took me about three and a half days, but I was only solidly working on them for about six hours each day.
In the end, I really liked how they looked, and actually got a lot of compliments on them from people on the con floor who had no idea what my cosplay was. So I'll call that a win. This costume was a lot of fun to make, and had me trying out a couple new techniques along the way. And I'm glad I got to bring all of you along with me on this ride. I'm not sure how often I'll post tutorials for full costumes, but hopefully there will be more tutorials and I'll get better at filming and editing in general. If you like this video or found any of these tutorials helpful, consider subscribing to my channel, following me on Instagram at Kakashi Coffee Kakun, or donating to my Ko-fi. All of the links will be in the description below. Bye for now!